Modern day smartphones have come a long way with their shooting capabilities, and if you want to get into filmmaking on a tight budget, a feature packed smartphone could be your best bet so you can cover every field from taking 4K footage to editing that and advertising your film. In this episode of Inzu Tech, we've rounded up some of the best phones for on the go filmmakers. Before we start though, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to Inzu Tech, and hit the bell icon for notifications. Now now without further ado, let's begin. The Sony Xperia lineup. Sony's Xperia line of smartphones is directly aimed at the filmmaker market. After Red tried and failed catastrophically, Sony is essentially the only successful camera manufacturer that also has a successful smartphone, applying its expertise in high-end camera manufacturing to the smartphone market. The company announced the third iteration of its Xperia lineup in 2021. The Sony Xperia 1 version 3 and and Xperia 5 version 3, which have a periscope lens with two different telephoto lengths. This may be switched between 70mm f2.3 and 105mm f2.8, with magnifications of roughly 3 and 4.4 times respectively. They're both optical telephoto lenses with optical image stabilization. The Xperia 1 also includes a 12 megapixel primary sensor with a beautiful wide aperture of f1.7, allowing for superior low light performance and a natural shallow depth of field. In fact, Apple's and Samsung's top devices have a similar wide aperture. The new Xperia phone can also shoot 4K video at 120 FPS, when competitors can only do 60 FPS at that quality. Cinema Pro, an app produced by Sony's cinematography subsidiary Cine Alta, also continues from previous versions with a more pro camera feed and function. Furthermore, if you have the Filmic Pro app, Xperia devices are recommended as Filmic also collaborates with Sony to optimize the app for their phones. However, these aren't the most anticipated Xperia models for 2021. That honor goes to the Xperia Pro i, a device that looks more like a camera that functions as a phone than a phone that functions as a camera. Sony even announced that it's a camera first and a smartphone second, even listing it as a camera. So what's the big deal. To begin, the smartphone has a 1-inch sensor, which is a slightly modified version of the one used in Sony's RX107 compact camera. The camera has a dual aperture, which Samsung last used on their S9, S10, Note 9, and Note 10 phones before discontinuing them. The biggest advantage of this is being able to adjust the amount of light hitting the sensor without exceeding the shutter speed, resulting in sharper video and a little more breathing room. However, However, since the lens cannot be put far away from the sensor to cover it, not all of the sensor is used. So even though it's a 20MP sensor, it's really only 12MP, which is the same as the iPhone's primary sensor. This means that the extra shallow depth of field we might have hoped for isn't present, and it's even somewhat less than the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. Having said that though, the surface area of the Xperia's photo sensor is 59% larger than that of the iPhone 13. Pro's main camera. When it comes to price, the Sony Xperia Pro i is not cheap, retailing for $1,800 in the United States and £1,600 in the UK. While it's a beautiful phone, the claims that it has the best shallow depth of field of any smartphone are simply incorrect. Nevertheless, it does benefit from its 1-inch sensor when capturing video, as there are fewer distortions and a bit more clarity than in previous smartphone shot videos. The detail appears to be real, rather than algorithmically improved or AI enhanced. Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra As expected of Samsung's top-of-the-line phone, the camera is top tier with a 108MP f1.8 primary sensor, a 12MP f2.2 ultra-wide sensor, and two telephoto cameras, which is nearly unheard of on phones. Both cameras have 10 megapixels, but one has an f2.4 aperture and 3x optical zoom, and the other has an f4.9 aperture 
offshore and 10 times optical zoom. Non-zoomed images are also stunning, although not always on par with the best competition. However, with a number of camera modes, including new ones like Director's View, which allows you to take video with both the front and rear cameras at the same time, and a highly capable 40MP front-facing camera, you have a smartphone filmmaker's dream. If you're vlogging, of course, it's recommended to avoid using the front-facing selfie camera. It's always of lower quality, sometimes noticeably so compared to the main camera, but nonetheless, the S21 Ultra selfie camera is still pretty high quality. The iPhone 13 lineup. Dolby Vision was the key innovation in the iPhone 12 series, enabling iPhone users to shoot video with a higher dynamic range and in 10-bit color. So why isn't the world already swamped with this technology? Well, the issue was that Dolby Vision was difficult to edit and color grade, with even Adobe Premiere Pro struggling to handle it. Nevertheless, both Final Cut Pro and LumaFusion perform admirably, as one would expect from Apple-only platforms. Another issue is that viewing Dolby Vision requires a suitable display and a compatible platform. Viewers using incompatible displays may have a terrible viewing experience, and this was enough to convince most people that the risk wasn't worth it. The iPhone 13 has a new and improved version of Dolby Vision, but this isn't its main new feature. Rather, it's the introduction of cinematic mode. The bokeh effect is one of the most noticeable aspects of a video filmed with a more professional camera. This effect is seen when the subject is sharp, but the background is blurry. The problem, though, is that you still need a large sensor, a wide aperture, and a very long lens to achieve this, which is almost unachievable in a flat device that fits in your pocket. Other phones have tried to recreate this effect with mixed results, but cinematic mode is a bit more advanced, with Apple boasting that it'll change the language of cinema. Essentially, this mode was already accessible in the iPhone 12 if you had a LiDAR scanner and a Focus Live app, but Apple decided to integrate the concept directly into the iPhone 13's camera app while making significant technological enhancements. Cinematic mode uses the iPhone's LiDAR scanner to generate a 3D map that simulates a shallow depth of field. The demo videos released by Apple were amazing, and the new automatic focus pull function appeared to be a lot of fun and potentially a game changer, but there were drawbacks. To begin, cinematic mode is limited to 30 FPS and 1080p quality, which seems absurd given that nearly every movie in cinemas is shot in 24 FPS. In addition, you cannot lock white balance in this mode. Finally, the 3D scanning technology isn't completely accurate. For instance, hair and glasses on a subject aren't adequately mapped, resulting in a less than ideal appearance. Also, as with Focus Live, cinematic mode is ineffective when the subject is too close. The iPhone 13 can also now record with Apple Pro Res. Smartphones typically produce video in a highly compressed codec like AVC or HEVC. While these are excellent for delivering high quality videos with small file sizes, they aren't ideal for color grading and shooting in log format doesn't change the fact that 420 chroma subsampling discards 75% of the color information. Because of the inclusion of ProRes, an industry standard codec, the iPhone 13s are the first smartphones to output pro-level video file. Although it's still compressed, the 422 chroma subsampling ensures that only 50% of the color information is lost. Google Pixel 6. The last, but definitely not the least phone on our list, the Google Pixel 6 perfectly captures true colors and is a great new go-to device that's not part of the Apple ecosystem. Its ultra-wide lens generates less distortion at the edges of images than many other ultra-wide lenses, and it comes with a great range of photo editing tools like Portrait Light, which enhances images by convincingly brightening faces and other subjects. With a 50MP f1.9 primary sensor and a 1.2 million pixels, many find this smartphone capable of shooting outstanding photos with sharp detail and lifelike colors. Well, that's the end of the video. Which of these phones do you like the most? Do you own any of them? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to Inzu Tech if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell if you're new to this channel to be notified when we upload more content. Thanks for watching.